Hello, my name is Muriel, and sometimes, not always, but sometimes, I have this sort of feeling of being not good enough. So, as a player, it usually starts with something physical, my costume being off, not looking fancy, accurate, impressive enough. Uh, then it can extend to performance, feeling that I didn't bring enough to the game because maybe I was tired, maybe I had a bad week at work, uh, missed opportunities. And then, as organizer, it extends in here as well. Imposter syndrome, being afraid of not getting it right. Um, everything within the realm of general performance and performance anxiety, like right now. <laughs> um, so I'm, I'm using anxiety in a loose sense of term, being perfectly aware that it's not necessarily rational, being perfectly aware that I also have the most privileges than most, but here you have. And, and I also often feel that I'm not alone in this. Uh, I don't have any numbers, I didn't run any survey, but I went, to, I went online to LARPA BFF, maybe you've heard of it, uh, and I just made a research with anxiety and stress as keywords, and within 10 minutes I had very, 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 varying motives of anxiety, such as people feeling anxious about hearing others' um, post lab wolf story, organizers feeling stressed uh, that other people were running similar game at the same time as they were, uh, people feeling anxious about the fact that a lot of people hug each other at the end of the lap and they felt uncomfortable with that, uh, people feeling anxious about writing their own character, uh, perf general performance anxiety, connecting to everything from uh, engaging in the lap to preparation and costume, uh, lap criticism, I'll get back on this, put a pin on it, um, and especially introversion and how to manage a very social activity such as lap when you're an introvert, which I can very much relate to. And so it definitely felt quite common, and, and usually it's a knowledge. And people are very sympathetic over it, very caring of each other, which is great. But most of the time, it feels to me like it was still considered as an individual issue and not necessarily a systemic issue. So individual issues uh, coming from internal sources of anxiety. Usually most uh, people talking about it say, okay, I am anxious about X and therefore uh, LARP will bring this sort of anxiety in me. Um, being also a knowledge that uh, anxiety is a very subjective emotion and obviously not LARP are created equal in this regard, put a pin on it. And, but also with the notion that if it's always an individual subjective issue, then it means that it's usually uh, said that it's your individual responsibility to manage your own anxiety and stress, which it very much might be. But what if it's also a systemic issue, which I take here in the definition something that is spread throughout system-wide in the community in general. And, and I've seen things change like this, and I've got a small example like this from my home country of France, where we were introduced very late to the notion of emotional safety. And for the greatest time, emotional safety was considered an individual problem. If you are triggered by anything, you should take care of yourself. Uh, it's no one's responsibility but your own to take care of it. Um, it's, uh, and if you are too sensitive, maybe you should avoid certain types of life, or maybe you should not laugh altogether. Yes, I've heard that. Um, but then we got introduced to more stuff, and there was a lot of activist work around this saying, the player is more important than the game, making it sure that it would be repeated, uh, and then publishing about safety issues, bringing in tools, communicating about this, and making it a sort of collective work. And for me, this is how it shifts from being just the individual responsibility to the collective responsibility. And it doesn't mean we forget taking care of ourselves and exercising self-care as individual, but it also become something bigger than ourselves. And I'm wondering if we don't have something similar with love anxiety, I'm not sure. I'm just wondering, which brings me to some elements of the discourse that might feed into that. And the first one being love as art. And make no mistake, I think it's great that love is an art form. I think it's wonderful that so many creators push the boundary, make love bigger, 
more, uh, more impressive, more immersive, uh, more, generally. But at the same time, there's not a big step going from there to a, perform to a performance. And with performance, because LARP is collective and because LARP is co-created, then it means that it can start building up some pressure around this. Uh, last month, I was in London, and I heard a very interesting talk by uh, Jonaya Kemper about LARP Anarchy, and she was relaying this anecdote where a player came to her as an organizer, and he was having difficulty with his LARP, and he wanted to change something in his game. And she said, yeah, very well, fine, go for it. But the player wouldn't at first. He, was, he said, I'm paraphrasing here, that he was afraid that he would ruin the LARP's vision, even though he had an organizer telling him, yeah, sure, go for it but he was still afraid to hurt the lab vision. So maybe it's a bit of an extreme case, but what if it is not? And, and it brings us back to lab criticism, and there's a lot of discussion about how do we do lab criticism, and it's an ongoing discussion, and I don't think it's a discussion that will always have an end, uh, but it's still uh, quite complicated. And the last element is um, lab reputation. A lot of the thing that I read in LARP anxiety is if I underperform in a LARP, then I might get a reputation as a bad LARPer. And it definitely, in some testimonies I've read, seemed to be hanging in there. And, and in a way, I sort of hit a wall of a contradiction between, on the one hand, we want to say, of course, LARP is inclusive and everyone should LARP because LARP is awesome. And on the other hand, we said, but we want LARP to be bigger and awesome and, and to be a form of art. And how do we reconcile that? I don't really know. Uh, but again, LARP BFFs had a discussion on this last April. Um, you can find it. Um, and it had some interesting ideas like communicating more clearly, especially for preparation, uh, taking care of people's physical needs, uh, working with positive reinforcement, um, having uh, positive reinforcement uh, workshops, for example, uh, dedicated emotional safety person, for organizer, delaying chores, having more support staff. Uh, and then there were also something interesting in the hype management, acknowledging that nobody can get really hyped and it's perfectly okay. And maybe also trying different communication channels because the hype management issue is especially very pervasive on Facebook. Um, and all these are good things. A lot of things are already be done, but apart from the last two, most of them were still talking to players' individual needs. But then when you say, we should acknowledge that no one, not everyone needs to be hyped, then there was a bit of a discussion about the collective. But it still felt quite timid. And, and again, I'm wondering if it's something that it should be. And like I said earlier, with the comparison with emotional safety, I believe it can be done because I saw things change. And for example, again, for myself, I grew up in a lab culture that didn't have any emotional safety. And yet I learned about it. I learned that the player is more important than the game, interiorized it, accepted it, and I'm hoping that in the same way that I said to myself, the player is more important than the game, I can say to myself, you will always be good enough for the game. Thank you for your attention.